Change the spark plugs, they said. It'll be fun. Well, let's just say I probably found the cause of my rough idol. Damn. All of my spark plug tubes, you can't even see the spark plugs. There's so much oil in there. I imagine these are leaking oil too. That is crazy. Just covered in oil. Wow. Here's the passenger side with the exact same result. It is pouring oil in there. Like in the worst way possible. So there's all six coils out of the car. This is the reason you do preventative maintenance. Again, I have no check engine codes whatsoever. And I have that much oil leaking. So this is not good. I gotta do a valve cover gasket now. So I'm headed to the store to get a valve cover gasket and I will be right back. All right, so I just come back from the local auto parts store. Typically I don't use Felpro, but today uh, it's what they had available, so. I've been leaving paper towels in there to absorb all the oil as much as possible. It's very possible that even replacing the valve cover gasket, it can be your cam girdle seal in between here. My fingers are crossed that I can just replace this and it's not the cam girdle seal. However, it's an Audi. Um, always expect the unexpected. Got paper towels all on this side soaking up as much of that oil as possible. To remove the valve cover, it's uh, quite a similar process. You'll just remove all of these T30 bolts out of the way. Um, I, I removed the other intake tube to get it out of the way. Uh, disconnect these, and pretty straightforward job to get those out. We'll jump into that right here. Uh, you can grab it now and just gently pull. You'll feel it start to separate. Well, unfortunately, during the process of just changing out my spark plugs, it is not the valve cover gasket that is leaking. I can clearly tell it is the cam girdle seal right here. So this, this is supposed to be a rubber gasket right here. Um, it's already broken, so clearly... I have to replace this, there's no way of getting around this. It just needs to be done. The whole entire thing has to come out, the cam gears have to come out. Unfortunately, my short video has turned into a long video. Um, thanks for coming on the journey with me, guys, and uh, let's get this all repaired and, and fixed up here. Just by taking the undercarriage off, letting it sit. Keep in mind, this is not ran or idled uh, at all since it's sat. This is the bottom of the vacuum pump, and it is absolutely just seeping right now. So we're gonna get that rebuilt and taken care of. Here we have the top of the vacuum pump. You can see the outside seal here is leaking. This is a very common issue. It doesn't even make a, a seal. And this is going to all your vacuum lines here. So uh, this whole unit's gonna get taken out and rebuilt next. And then we're gonna move along to this. One thing I did discover on this job, somebody actually used the wrong gasket maker. They used a silicone, like RTV based gasket maker. Uh, this is very bad. Very bad, very bad, okay. So you can see the like black RTV up here too. That is the wrong gasket to use. So what happens if you use this black sealant in here and if you ooze some out on the sides right here, it gets mixed in with your oil. It can harden and actually clog up some of your oil channels. So we'll take a look at that further when we get in there. But next on the docket is we're gonna remove this vacuum pump and then we're going to take all the vacuum lines off. Then we're gonna move on to the timing covers here. Just cut these one-time use clips here. We're gonna remove these vacuum lines out of the way so we can get this vacuum pump out. Then you can just pull this straight up. We're gonna go ahead and disconnect the, the whole vacuum system here. To remove this vacuum line all the way out of the way, there'll be one more one-use clamp back here. You have to cut it and then once you cut that clamp, this pulls out freely. I used a heat gun on mine just lightly. And I also discovered a small little crack right there, so I'm gonna replace that as well. Next, you'll want to remove this little vacuum part on front and come over and remove these. If you've, if you've never replaced this line, um, it'll probably crack on you. And just like I was talking about, 
Mine's a little fragile and old, so it broke. I have a clean break, so what I'll most likely do, probably just cut this and just extend it over. It'll still work just fine, so. Anyways, continuing on. Now you can get uh, this funky looking guy out of your way and somewhere safe. So next we actually have to clean out this gunk in here to remove these T30s that are holding it in. There should be one bolt here, one bolt here, and one more bolt on the bottom right here. Now we want to be able to access this bolt here uh, without stripping it. So a good way to do that is to get all this dirt out of here because this will prevent the tip from going all the way in. You never want to prevent the tip from going in, you know? All right, all the other ones look pretty clean, but that was really the only dirty one, so now we're gonna remove all three of these. To get this free and separated, a really good way without scarring anywhere is right between this knob and this knob. Kind of stick your screwdriver through there, and just pull it back. We're broken free now, so this realistically should Just slide right out. You can see where oil is just, just absolutely seeping out of the bottom of this. Very cheap rebuild, very easy to do, very common problem. Like new again, let's go. You have to use this tool right here to turn the engine top dead center. It is a must, you just need it. So anyways, insert this tool. Uh, very skinny wrists are recommended, or you can access it from the bottom as well. But you put that tool in place, you add the socket to the end of it, and then you turn the motor only clockwise until it comes top dead center. You have to go underneath the car on the driver's side. And underneath the car, there is the bolt hole for the uh, engine locking pin. Behold, the very inconveniently placed hole for the engine locking pin. <laughs> to get to the top dead center locking pin, you have to undo your sway bar here. Just undo these bolts, it'll pull right down. And then you can stick a six millimeter hex socket right up there. It is a very, very, very tight spot. You must remove the sway bar to get to this spot. And then once you're on it, mine did not struggle that hard to come off. Um, mine's coming out pretty easily. However, you will only be able to go so far up here because the bolt backs out, it'll lock the ratchet up against that. So you have to actually take this out by hand or take the ratchet off and do it some other way. Whenever you finally get to it, that is what the uh, top dead center locking pin looks like. This is where you place the new locking pin that you get in the kit. All right, so that's the one you'll be taking out, and that's the one you'll be putting in. So here's the engine mount, and right here is where you have to insert the engine locking pin. If this doesn't go in very easily and start threading on its own, do not force it. You have to get the engine top dead center or this will not go in. It is a much bigger pin than the one you're taking out, and you cannot force this in here. If you can't get it in, you need to go turn the engine again until you get it to the top dead center mark. To get it to the top dead center mark, you have to check out the cam alignment holes right here. So after you have the crank turning tool in there, you then turn the engine with the valve covers off until you see these two holes line up as close as you can. You want both of them to line up, and then your cam alignment tool goes on like so. So just like that, again, only clockwise until these line up. And I'll show you how the tool goes on right here. Again, don't try to do this job unless you have the right tools, people. And also do not try to force these bolts in. If they are not lining up properly, you need to go and adjust the position of the engine first. But once these holes are lined up, underneath, it should line up easy peasy. If you strip out your holes on one of your cams, well, you're gonna have a bad day. A very bad day. So just very slowly do each of these by hand and just hand tighten them. And after you're done inserting your engine locking pin, go ahead and come back and tighten these to maybe about 17 foot pounds or so. You do not need to tighten these that much at all. And also I want to note, I'll note this again as well. These are not cam lockout tools. This is a camshaft alignment tool. When you have to break free the bolts, holding the actual cam gears in back here, you have to use a lockout tool because if too much force or pressure gets put on the end of these bolts, they will snap and then you will have a broken bolt inside of your camshaft. So please people, 
Do not use this as a lockout tool. And if you do, it's at your own risk. You did not see that shit here to tell you to do it. Do it the right way. Use the lockout tool and I will show you how to do that. Next, we're gonna remove the rear timing covers on each side. Also guys, I wanted to note, I did remove the whole entire wiring harness uh, before filming. Uh, I just didn't film it and I didn't get it. And I didn't think it was that important to show the, the taking all these wires off because if you can't get this off or feel comfortable without getting this wire harness off, then this rest of the job is you're in way too over your head. Take it to a mechanic. So if you need a how-to on how to take this harness off, again, I would avoid doing the rest of this job. That again is why it's probably skipped here. This is a little bit more of an advanced job where not every do-it-yourself mechanic is going to be able to do at home. Next on the list, we're going to remove all these T30 bolts holding in the timing cover that is actually leaking very badly on both sides. And I put like a blanket or a tad on here to help catch any of the bolts that fall down. Sometimes they fall. Remember where these brackets go when you take them off too. It's always good to film yourself as well so that you can actually see what you're doing too. Don't lose track of where these go. Move my little pipe out of the way. That's what I tell her. Just fold it. <laughs> Just fold it. <laughs> Pinch it. <laughs> Get that out of the way. Oh, I thought I just stripped the shit out of it, but it broke free. <laughs> I was like, damn, I've been really good at not stripping anything. I've been really careful, taking my time, using yeah. the right size bit. Now that I said that, shit. Friday the 13th. Better knock on wood. It's Friday the 13th. Ah, see? Already almost lost one, but uh, got me a wild one there. The one down here, it's helpful to get a small swivel on too, so you can get the right angle. This one's easy to strip. All right, so I can't stress this enough. You have to be very careful with these little bolts. You can strip them very easily just because you're at a weird angle in the shape of them and everything. Next, now that all these are removed, we're gonna go and separate. There's a little pry spot right here so you don't have to jam a screwdriver between. There's a pry spot right here and a pry spot right here. Um, I like to heat this up real quick just because it makes it simpler and easier for me to pull off. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that real quick. So I used a rubber mallet and kind of just tap this in here lightly. And just slowly pull it. Okay, you don't want to put too much pressure and you don't want to scar the metal. Go ahead and move over here. Actually, we'll keep this in. And you can see right here where mine was actually failing and, and uh, leaking pretty miserably at the back there. All right, next, I'm gonna show you how to use a lockout tool and we're going to remove both of these triple square bolts holding it in right here. Okay, now it's time for the cam locking tool. This tool is used on both sides. However, when you're using it on a passenger side, they go in this way. When you're using it on the driver's side, you flip it, rotate them, they go in on this side. They just unscrew and come on the other side. If you don't do that, then every time you're going to try to use this, it's just gonna open on you and it's not gonna lock up. So we have a triple square M14. This will remove the cam adjuster bolts. And I'll show you how to use a lockout tool with this right now. Be very, very careful. If you strip these bolts out, you're gonna have a bad day. Okay, so this part of the tool goes inside these little grooves right here. It just helps lock in the cam so you can put extra tension on it backwards. If you use it the other way, like if I was twisting this way, you can see how it would open. So that's why you have to reverse those pins. When you reverse the pins, then you can get this to grip. This way I'm pulling towards myself. I'm gonna enter the tool. All right, tools in place. Put the cam lock out. You can kind of squeeze it around it and then put tension on it. That's how you'll get a good lock. Make sure that thing's in all the way. And then make sure you give even torque so you're not turning this. <laughs> Once you get it loose, the rest should come out by hand. And that's what the triple square cam adjuster bolt looks like. Oh, and uh, keep in mind, you will actually pour oil out for a little bit too. So good to have that uh, 
towel down there. You'll also want to replace these bolts 100% too. Do not reuse these bolts. They're not that expensive, but they do stretch out over time and they have a decent amount of torque applied to them. Now with the cam adjuster undone, you can slowly wiggle it back. And remove it from its mount. Don't worry if the teeth move around at all. The engine is locked top dead center. This is why you need the tool 100%. You cannot do this job without the tool, and if you do, you are risking a, you're risking a lot. You're risking not having your engine time up properly, and I promise you, these are not easy to time up if you get this wrong. Now we're going for the lower exhaust one. All right, so for the exhaust side, remember, it's gonna leak out quite a bit. So make sure you have something down. Otherwise, it's gonna spill all over your exhaust and not smell so good. Oh, this one didn't leak out as bad as the other one did. All right, so now we have the timing chain adjusters off. They're off to the side, labeled. We have the high pressure fuel line disconnected here, which really didn't have much pressure and you can hold a towel underneath it and then just undo it. Uh, I forgot to film. I suck. I'm sorry. At this point, we're actually ready to start removing all of these Torx bolts. There is a, a removal sequence that is recommended. I'm not sure how important it is. However, I will put it up on the screen right here. And then you follow those numbers uh, on removal. And then you follow the numbers when you uh, torque everything back down as well. That way everything has very even torque all through it. So let's get started on that. Down to 21, over to 20, which is on this bottom corner, up to 19, down to 18, up to 20. And we off. So now that we have the cam griddle removed, we will clean up all the edges here and get rid of this RTV. Whoever did this is an idiot. I already pulled a bunch of it out because I couldn't stand to see it. But next, we're going to remove the timing tensioner. To do so, there's one T30 there, one T30 there, and another T30 over there. Not sure if it's supposed to do this either, but my tensioner just flaps up and down. So that could be why I'm getting my knocking noise right here too. One more up here that you have to remove the timing chain, like out of the way to get to. All right, so now with all the bolts removed, this should come right out. And there you have it, broken. A very easily forgotten about part is actually the gasket to the timing chain tensioner itself. It's a little metal piece and it's gonna feel like it's gonna snap out of there. Uh, this little gasket has to be, come out too because on a new one, you already have a new one of these. You don't wanna use the old one anyway, so. You could easily forget that, put that back in, and you'd have a very bad leak. So upon taking off the cam girdle assembly, there's actually supposed to be a head dowel or a head pin right here. Uh, it's a mounting pin to help mount your cam girdle back on. So there, sh there should be a pin here and a pin here and on both sides, they're missing. Now, while that might not seem like a big deal, you could just think like, hey, why don't you just put it on there and try it anyways? Um, when you put the cam girdle on here, it actually has pressure on all these little springs and rocker arms that move back and forth. 
and you have to torque them very specifically. Also, you'll still have a wet gasket underneath the cam girdle. So when you're putting it on, you can't really like shift it and position it around. You're going to ruin your gasket if you shift it and position it around like that. So those head pins really, really help. Um, I don't have them and I can't find them anywhere. If somebody actually knows, drop a, drop a comment below, but I can't find them. So basically, I'm going to sacrifice this screwdriver right here. This screwdriver fits just perfectly in the hole. So I'm going to cut this screwdriver in four small sections, and then we're going to round it off a little bit on the top and basically give us a basis to kind of to lock in here. So those will at least be here and here. So they'll at least marry together once we put the cam girdle on. All right, screwdriver, it's been real. Thank you for your sacrifice, but I need head studs. All right, so we got the pieces of the screwdriver I cut. Uh, they're inserted from the bottom so they don't get pushed back out. And they actually work perfectly. They're exactly the size I need and it might as well be factory pins. Now you're gonna wanna remove any remaining gasket material all through the outside edge here. A little brake cleaner and a little scrubby scrubby on top and you'll, you'll want like a nice uh, clean surface like that all throughout. So we're gonna jump forward to doing that because nobody wants to see me scrub this thing down. Okay, jumping back over to the cam girdle, make sure you remove your camshaft position sensors before cleaning. I'm going to re-gasket them as well. You can, great time to replace these as well. They're pretty inexpensive and uh, easy to replace. There will be a link down below for some of these as well, um, as with all the other parts. So this is our gasket here. Hang on. I mean, guys, this $9 seal can cause you a lot of problems. So I just want to show something real quick. You see how this seal right here? I can just like bend this around, move it around. It's flexible like your mom. So check this one out. This thing is crispy like a piece of bacon. Yeah. Uh, it does, but. So if that's breaking like that, and this is moving like that, you can only imagine that's why these have failed miserably. So we're gonna pull this off. We're gonna clean up all the surface area where a gasket is going to seal. And we're going to grease the internals of every area we can with assembly lube just to make it that much better. Let's get into that. Now we have the cam girdle cleaned up ready for the fresh install. Cleaned up the cams a little too because they were dirty. Going to regasket the cam position sensors on the right side. It's already been regasketed. Prep the timing cover. The gaskets are different for the driver's side and passenger side, so make sure you're using the right one. You can only go in one way. Next, I'm gonna put some assembly lube in all of these spaces. Make sure you don't put it in the engine cap though. I highly recommend doing this anytime you're putting uh, cams or anything in the engine back together like so. Very carefully place your cams in when you do this because this is aluminum and it can dent very easily. You fuck up and scar this, you're gonna be having a bad day. Now we need to flip it and install the cam lock again. Now hold it firmly, very gently set it down. Make sure you're working on something soft too. Don't work on like a hard like cement or anything like that. This is not something you do on the ground. Now we have the cams locked. We can get ready for the sealant to be applied. And guys, if you only listen to one thing from my channel, let it be this. Use the OEM sealant. I can't stress this enough. When I did this job, it was uh, RTV everywhere and it can clog the oil channels. I keep saying this so much and people just don't want to get it through their head. I don't, I don't care that this is expensive. If you don't like that this is expensive, don't buy an Audi or a Volkswagen. Go drive a Honda or something. But this is anaerobic sealant and you will need this sealant to do the bead on the cam girdle all the way through here. So you can't skip on this, just order it. There's a link in the bio. All right, so I highly, highly recommend before you install this cam girdle to do a test fit. 
That way you see everything that's gonna be in the way. You see how it's gonna sit. Like this, for example, I, don't, I really don't wanna take this off so I have to just keep this pressed back just a little bit or it'll get in the way. You don't want anything to break your sealant bead on the bottom. There is no sealant on this currently. It is just sitting in here loose. I also wanted to show why it's so important for these, for these guide pins. See, I have a guide pin there and there's a guide pin down in there. Without those guide pins, this girdle would rock back and forth. And as you can see, this cam is pushed on this rocker arm fully. So that's the reason why this actually won't seat down. So without those guides, you're gonna be sliding around your cam girdle and be messing up your sealant. It's gonna be a pain in the ass. If you're missing those, just make them real quick. It was really easy and well worth it too. So you can see mine will just pull right off. It's, it's still loose, it's just sitting on there. Time for some sealant and we're gonna get this thing sealed up. All right, I highly recommend uh, using fresh gloves and cleaning off the areas that you've already cleaned with brake cleaner to make sure they are 100% spotless. All right, so here we have the sealant on. It's okay if you use a little bit excess. Remember, this is not RTV, so it will not harden up and go into your engine. Only the outside needs to be done. The inside is all underneath the valve cover. This is all that needs to be on there. It will not set up right away. This sealant only sets up with lack of oxygen once pressed between two hard surfaces. If you leave it here for 24 hours, it would still be gummy. However, I do not recommend that. It's time to go to the install right now. You gotta be careful not to let it touch anything. You do not want this be to break you want your uh, seal to be very nice and clean line it up with the guide pins the best you possibly can you're not going to be able to get it all the way down remember you're going to need the bolts to do that fresh hardware don't use anything else And here I'm just using a screwdriver to get all of these Torx bolts just hand tied in. Um, as you tighten each one, the cam girdle will move down slightly as you can see. So I just went through with my hand carefully doing this. You gotta check the rocker arms when you're doing this as well to make sure that none of them have moved or anything like that. And just take your time, try to do the sequence as best as possible and get this thing seated down there before you get to torquing it. Well, now we're going to torque all these buggers down, which is uh, 70 inch pounds of torque. I just wanted to show you guys the main reason you use a sealant like this is because you see how the sealant leaks into the engine here. So if this is RTV, over time it's going to harden and crack. It's going to fall off into the engine. It's going to clog oil passages. It's not going to be good. This sealant washes away with the oil and does not solidify unless there's a lack of oxygen placed between two metals. That is why it is the proper sealant to use. Now it's time to put the timing tensioners back in. Now remember this side was broken and the hydraulic piston here failed. You can see this little hole right here. It actually has like a banjo screen where oil goes through right here. That oil basically fills up your hydraulic tensioner and stuff like that. So on startup, I was getting that crazy sound. Anyways, make sure you check your tensioner to make sure that it's the right one. The two sides are different. So make sure you note that they are not the same. Another thing I wanted to point out was the maker of this one, um, INA, INA. Of course it has the Audi stuff here. But I found this one online for a lot cheaper with the same stamps. This was $100 cheaper. And I don't know, I don't, I don't, I don't think I need a, a factory one for this is what I'm saying. So let's get this installed now. Well, I thought I was recording, but I guess not. Um, put the timing chain on like here to rest it. Finagle this thing in real nice. And then just find a bolt hole. Put everything in hand tight. I have two bolts in so far hand tight.
All right, so a tip on finding the, all the bolt holes is use the old tensioner and make sure you have each of the holes done. The one over here, you'll have to move the timing chain out of the way just to get to it. Now it's time to put the camshaft adjusters on. If you're curious which one goes where, look right underneath the Audi logo. It'll literally say intake, or just know that the one with the intake is the one without the spring, and the one on the exhaust side is the one with the spring. Remember these brand new bolts as well. Just gonna set this in to hold it in place. Now we'll try to get the exhaust side on. So the chain should be tight even when you're putting this thing on. Um, it should be rather difficult to get on. Just make sure that you're not skipping any teeth. Make sure that you're like as close as possible right here on the teeth. And this slack will get taken away once we pull the pin. But we're gonna torque both of these bolts in here first to make sure that everything is in working order. Until I get to test both sides, I'm actually not gonna torque this down that much. We're just gonna go to uh, about 40 Newton meters. So now moving on to the driver's side timing cover here. I removed the top of the oil filter housing just because it's a lot easier to get to. Next, we have a, a bracket back here. So we have to remove this double nut right here where the wire is connected to to remove this bracket to get it out of the way. This is that double nut removed from the back mount holding those wires. My wire clip actually snapped. Oh, not a big deal, we'll just replace that. Put some fresh one on there. But yeah, I mean, doing this job, you're gonna find all kinds of problems that is wrong with your car. For example, I was checking this vacuum line here and I found a little tiny crack right on the back. <laughs> but no, just barely moving this. I mean, you can hear it. It's so brittle and just crunchy. And this is where things got really interesting. So I took off all the top torques on this timing cover here. And of course, the last one on the bottom, right up against the shock tower, stripped. And I have tried everything that I could to get this bolt out. Um, my extractor won't fit because it's so close against the wall. There's no room because of the exhaust there. It is a nightmare. Check this out on the mirror. Get a zoomed in shot of it here. And there's one of them that's stripped. It just rounded out. And then this other one here, I've already tried cutting it because I figured I'd be able to cut a notch in it, stick a flathead in it, and then open or and then unscrew it that way. But this is the little diamond cutting wheel that I used, and it just it wasn't enough. I could never get the flathead in there enough to remove it. So now the whole engine has to come out so I can get to this because I don't have any other option. And of course, thanks to German engineering here, you got to take off the front bumper bumper support and the headlights out that way you can pull the core support forward into the front lock position one tip here is take the long bolts from your bumper support and use those as your front lock carrier bolts that way you don't have to buy the special tool it'll allow you to slide the front of it on just like that here we are with the car in front lock position um, I have the AC condenser removed I have the power steering pump removed it's sitting right here um, all the coolant lines are disconnected, belt's taken off, everything's pretty much ready. Now, my next step is to actually remove that locking pin, and then I actually need to remove this pin now, because I have to be able to rotate the engine. 
to get to the torque converter bolts. The torque converter bolts are located through this slot. This is where the starter is located and you can rotate or you can rotate the crank and basically there's three bolts holding the torque converter right here. So that's next on the agenda is to remove those. Then I'll remove the bell housing bolts and then the engine's ready to be pulled out. It's a very tight spot. Uh, luckily I got arms like a vegetarian so I'll get up in there. Then we have the locking pin pulled out. I'm gonna leave it out for now. I'm not gonna put anything back in it. I just need that to rotate the engine. Now with the locking tool, I'm going to slowly turn the engine clockwise to make sure that the timing is still right over here before moving forward. You just rotate the engine like so. You want to go nice and slow because if anything collides, you want to be able to stop and fix it immediately. So to see how even it still is, I want to see how easily the cam locking tool goes back in. All right, so I'm able to get the tool in just by finger tight on both sides. So I believe the timing is still pretty, it's still accurate to the best of my ability. So when you're removing the torque converter bolts, uh, it's a two person job, honestly, it's a lot easier for me. Um, it was hard to break that bolt free. You could probably get away with one person doing it, but it's a lot easier to have somebody hold the wrench right here and then uh, have the breaker bar set up here. So this is the setup I use to get the uh, torque converter bolt out. Basically this gives you a lot more room to get out so you can use a breaker bar because they are in pretty good. Uh, the thing you have to be careful with this is if you rock it back and forth and strip that, you will be in a world of hurt. Um, so be very careful, make sure you have the proper bit. Um, but yeah, that's what I use. And that's the access hole right there. So basically you'll rotate the engine and uh, go to the next bolt. And do, there's only three of them in there. So once you get them out, it's relatively easy. A little bit right right there stop all right so now we're to the next hole uh, so yeah I'll just remove this one go on to the next one and then we'll separate the engine from the transmission filming that in that area is uh, very difficult so skip that part moving on to the engine removal here remove the bell housing bolts and the motor mount bolts and pretty much came right up had to disconnect the hood and move that up but it was relatively easy the torque converter was probably the hardest part of that Boom, and there you have it, folks. This whole project, just to get to back here. All right, I'm working on the back of the timing cover now. I was finally able to extract this. After some other broken tips, the Irwin finally came through and pulled it out. These ones, I've already tried to cut and use a flathead with, so they're, they're gonna be a little bit more of an issue, but basically, just wanted to show this as I'm working. I'm a, I drill that out, I'm gonna hammer this in with a hammer. Uh, once I get stuck, I'm gonna try to extract all these bolts. So, uh, I, got, I got this hammered in, just wanted to show the last one in case this one does come out. Probably won't because I'm on camera. But basically just apply pressure. Oh! Keep filming. I finally uh, got these damn bolts off. This is the whole reason the engine was pulled, is uh, to get these out. Uh, I can't do this in the car. There's not enough room to get this bit in against the firewall. So. Now we can finally get to where I was trying to go. All right, so in the middle of uh, putting everything back together and about to take this side off, I noticed that it looked like there's some oil coming around here. I feel like I would be a fool to not check under here. And uh, if the rear main seal is leaking right now is the best time to replace it. There's also a rear timing cover right here. So that's gonna get a full inspection as well. Um, so we're already this far and I really don't want to but we're just gonna pull this thing off and inspect it. All right, so I have all of the bolts removed and now we're going to remove this rear timing cover and fingers crossed that I don't get fucked. All right, so uh, here we are. This timing cover is not easy to get off. Make sure you have all the bolts. There is some hiding up here and under here. But uh, we're to the point where we finally got this free enough to drop it. 
and there we are. So decent news, most of these guides are actually still in one piece. I, I'm actually impressed with how this looks. What you want to look for is you want to see if these guides are broken. You can see there's just a little tiny tab broken off right here. I'm not too worried about that. Hopefully I can find it in here maybe. Uh, you want to make sure the teeth you can see aren't rounded off. No problems. There is another hydraulic tensioner located in there as well. Doesn't look like the funnest thing to replace. So I am very happy with how all this turned out. So remember when using the lockout tool from the other side, you got to switch the, the prongs over. You heard? One side it won't lock, the other side it will. That's how the tool is made to work. Doing this outside the car was actually so much easier. Um, I'd prefer to do it that way if it didn't involve all that extra work. So remember when you're flipping it to this side, you gotta reverse the pins. That way you don't uh, open it up when you're using it. And here we're just removing the cam adjusters and the bolts, getting those up out of the way. And then once you get to the point of removing this timing chain and the tensioner, basically we'll break all the bolts free really quick like so. And then the chain I just take out all the way after I get the tensioner unbolted, gives it a little bit of room um, just to get it out of the way I guess. You can leave it in there too if you want to, but it was just easier to take it out uh, with everything else, so that's how I did it here. And then just take the last bolt off and the tensioner and pop that out. So you can see this whole piece was ready to break off and just fall in there at any given time. Because uh, it's right here. So I really only had uh, that being held on by the timing chain. When we start up, this will move around. This is somewhere in the engine. Other than that, it's just grooved. Just got some grooves in it. There's a little gasket in here, too. You've got to make sure to remove this before you put the old one back in, otherwise you're not going to have a good day. So now I'm actually going to remove all this fun stuff. Almost all of these feel like they're going to snap when you're in doing them, so it's actually quite terrifying. These springs have tension on them. So you move from the outside and work your way in. If you just do the, if you did this and uh, just start taking one side off randomly, it'll be bent and uh, it'll have pressure on it. So you, all kinds of problems. Just do it the right way. Man, they're just like filled with nasty sludge that no bueno. All right, well now that they're all loosened up. Um, now I'll come back through with the impact, and it's just quicker that way. Just got to crack it free a little bit. Careful not to scar anything. You want to be very careful where you stick the screwdriver in doing this. This one will pick her up like so. Uh, the sound of RTD breaking. These gears are locked in by the cam gear. All these bolts are out. So then you'll just pull it up like so. And there you have the problem I'm experiencing because these gaskets are failed and they're leaking. And this should not be RTV. Don't use RTV in here. That's not the way people. Anaerobic sealant only. Spend that money or don't drive a German car. There will be an engine cap as well. Two engine caps on the end here. This is what controls your fuel pump. So there's a little tappet right here. So these gaskets are so hard, you literally can't even take them out. I'm gonna save these for another video and I'm gonna see if those gasket rejuvenators can actually rejuvenate gaskets because I promise they don't. Look at this. This is about to get sucked into the engine anytime. That's why you don't use this sealant. You use anaerobic sealants, people. I right, got this area prepped and ready. I'm waiting on a few parts before I can get this on. Meanwhile, 
Uh, I'm moving to the front here. These are completely shot. Those are both going to get replaced. I'm going to degrease the front of the engine. And we're also going to be replacing the oil cooler gasket once the part gets here. So let's jump into that. So I made the paper towel kind of shaped like the spark plug. Went down there and soaked everything up. That one. Pull this one out. So all the way for more parts, we're actually going to uh, rebuild this vacuum pump, regasket it, get it ready. Just getting everything prepped so that once I have the parts, we can slap everything together. So let's get into this. Placing this seal, the gasket on the back, and then we'll clean all this up. It's been leaking out of the bottom here for a long time, since before I got the car. Now that we're here, we're just going to clean everything. So we have it all cleaned up. Uh, I got my gasket rebuild kit off Amazon. There's a link in the bio below. So you got these three gaskets that came out. And you got these three gaskets that came in. We're going to use a little bit of assembly lube here because I never like dry starting anything. That'll just allow this to slide much better through here. Oh yeah, much better. On the startup, that way it's nice and smooth. Now we're going to reassemble the face, got the inside all cleaned up and prepped. This guy just goes in here, make sure it's even. Sometimes it's a tight fit, so you can put it upside down, push down until you get that seal. It's locked in there. So now we have the whole thing rebuilt. I'm gonna go install it on the car real quick. Remember guys, my engine is out for the other repairs. Doing this in the car is just as simple. It's really not that hard. I took this out while it's in the car in the beginning of the video. Um, putting it back in like this just because it's much easier while everything is out. All right, so I have the cam girdle seal uh, prepped and ready to go. We'll be using the anaerobic sealant on here and I did get some new engine caps. This engine cap had like a weird groove on the outside of it right here. So I just didn't want to reuse this one. So, uh, new engine caps from the dealership, anaerobic sealant. Gonna get this gasket stuck in here. I am short on time, so I'm trying to get this done before Christmas so I can use my car, so a lot of this is gonna be visual. I'm not gonna be explaining much, so. You don't have to do this, but I got OCD bad, so I just like when stuff is clean, and this is why you know, like engine flush doesn't really take off that much stuff. You physically have to scrape that stuff off, so. No flush in your engine is not going to take it off. Now that I got these clean, uh, it's time to reinstall them back in. You actually want to be super careful when putting these back in. If you set them in wrong, you can dent the aluminum easily, and then you're not going to have a good day. Cleaning the last debris out of here. Don't be shy with the lubricant either. It's just going to go into your engine. It's lubricant, so this is going to prevent the cam from dry firing because it's going to take a while for the oil to get there. A little healthy 
little healthy amount on there. Only one way this can go in to keep the least amount of rotation, just make sure the bolt holes on the, the upper side here. And then just slowly lower it until everything aligns. Don't get your glove caught like I did. The power shebang. There we go. Nice and smooth in there, you see that? Get that lubrication all around it. Lubrication, oh yeah. All right. I'm gonna take the tool now. We're gonna carefully rotate this and flip it over. Just keep pressure. Make sure those holes are lined up and attach that. You wanna make sure that it's sitting flush with the metal on each side. And you'll also wanna check this when installing a timing chain too. Now I can flip it and uh, redo the gasket. All right, so I have the gasket all ready, the other side's ready. So now we have to very carefully carry this over there and uh, get it installed. All new hardware too. Remember, you have to do this without touching this. They can't hit the dipstick. Just be very careful putting this on. Woo, let's go, those pins are clutch. Right, you'll only get about halfway in until you get the screws in there, so. Make sure you check all of the rockers too before. Make sure they're all lined up, because once you get this down, you don't you don't want to come back up. Everything looks like it checks out. So I'll just go hand tight at first. Again, look, I'm barely putting it down. See? You start with these two, and it'll, this will sink the whole thing down in the beginning. That's how it looks installed. Cam tool hooked up here. Remember when all this washes in here, I know I've said it before, but the oil washes this out and it doesn't clog your oil ports. So if you do RTV in here, you're gonna have a bad day. But uh, yeah, I mean next we're going to put the timing chain in and the timing chain tensioner. And then we're gonna put the cams on here, tighten these down, and then we're gonna test the rotation of the motor about five to six times and make sure that we're still on time. I had some issues on this side where I actually had to retime this. Um, these weren't lining up at all. So, you know, hope everything is still good. Other than that, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna end up cleaning these sprockets, getting the timing chain tension already. And uh, my next step here is I actually am going to torque these down on the torque sequence to exactly what they need to be torqued down to, which is eight Newton meters uh, plus 90 degree turn. So when you convert eight Newton meters to inch pounds, cause that's what I'm working with, 70 inch pounds plus a quarter turn. All right, so we got about 71 inch pounds here on the wrench. I already tightened this one. So it wants 90 foot pounds, which is a click. 
and then it wants a 90 degree turn. So you can set it like, you can set it like this, and then give it a 90 degree turn. To there. And that's it. So we're gonna go here, click. And you don't have to use a torque wrench for this either. You can use a, a socket wrench, obviously, so. All right, so here's the tensioner that I am replacing. As you can see, broken, grooved, and all that. There's the new tensioner. That's how that should look. So yeah, that's uh... Oh, hey, look at that. The whole valve just fell out of it. All right, then. So yeah, next we're going to install this timing tensioner and the timing chain at the same time. So, and as always, we got new hardware in the cup, so don't pull this pin for any reason. All right, so right here you can actually see where the chain has hit this a few times because the tensioner failed so bad. So that's interesting. I don't know why, but for whatever reason, the little link right here goes on the outside. It's easiest. Drop this down, put that on there. Wow. This is my first time doing any of this work, guys. I've never worked on an Audi engine before. So I'm just giving it to you guys as I learn it. So we're gonna keep that like that. Hey, there we go. Got it lined up now. Right now. Just line up those holes. And we're in the home stretch. These are nine Newton meters of torque. That much right there. So, so the intake side on there. So the next part, uh, I have the rear timing cover here. Uh, I'm going to finish cleaning this up. I'm going to be replacing the rear main seal. I'm going to clean up uh, all the edges along here just to make a clean mating surface. As odd as this sounds, from the dealership itself, this is RTV, 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 RTV. This is a grommet. And this is a, another gasket as well like an o-ring. I have both of the replacements here. It was like 25 bucks just to get these two. Kind of stupid. I could have ordered them online, but I ran out of time. So I'll be replacing both of these. Uh, we'll re-RTV all these when they go back in. Uh, we could not find any part number for these anywhere. So there is no grommets for them. Um, the guy at the Audi parts place worked there for 25 years and could confirm that there was none there. So have fun in the comment section. Other than that, uh, yeah, we're going to get this thing cleaned up and, uh, Right back to it, so. All right, so I have the new uh, gaskets here. There's a part number if you do this job. You will need these. 
Um, and you can order them online ahead of time too. And I found out why, it's only one. So this is actually a deeper channel than all these three. Even though they're the same size diameter, all of these are gonna be RTV. And I imagine because maybe oil doesn't leak past those points, I don't know. Either way, for whatever reason, Audi has a grommet here and one here, so I'm putting those in. Uh, this is prepped and ready, rear main seal is in. Next we'll be filling this with, next we'll be filling uh, the line with RTV and then we'll be installing this on the back of the engine. All right, so there's no RTV on this right now, but I highly recommend if you're doing this job, doing a test fit a few times. This is the old rear main seal here and you wanna see if you can successfully install the rear main seal before you use your new one, because if you ruin your new one, you're gonna have a bad day. Most of them, they come with this little like cup. So this goes in and uh, it helps the seal. I'll show you guys when I install it, but it helps the seal not catch a lip around here. Because if you catch a lip around here, well, you're also gonna have a bad day because you're gonna leak oil. But you also have to line up the head gaskets and all that RTV that's on it. So this is my third, this is my, uh, this is my third time, look at those fingers. This is my third time test fitting uh, this on here and I finally got it successfully. The first two times were not successful on the rear main seal. So I highly recommend test fitting before you get it on there um, and just seeing how it goes. This, this just pulls right back off. So, and I'm gonna replace this gasket steel st still. So I just wanted to make sure that I could successfully get that on there. All right guys, so I know I'm a big, huge proponent on getting the right tools to do the right job. So if I mess this up, you guys can make fun of me in the comment section below. I don't have the right tool and I'm running out of time. So I have a nice piece of hardwood that's nice and flat against this. And we're just gonna try to get it nice and flat in there. Remember, this is not mechanical advice. You're just watching my videos. This is for entertainment purposes only. I'm close. I'm almost there. It does have to sit in a little bit further. Um, I might use the old gasket or something and try it out. All right, let's see if this crazy idea works. So this side of the gasket is perfectly uh, that shape, obviously. So we're gonna try to set this on here. Go. I'd call that installed, boys. What do you think? I'll let you guys be the judge. Is it hella flush or nah? Now we're just going to use the RTV black. I'm gonna use a fine line around uh, the whole entire thing and all the grommets. Not gonna lie, laying down this RTV, it's tedious and annoying. It looks easy on camera, but my hand got so exhausted like right around this point, if I remember correctly, but either way, fill this whole line with RTV, be careful and put it all on there. And then uh, all the other little holes, which are also pretty tedious too. But yeah, this was one of my least favorite parts of the job. I actually had to do this twice because I messed up the first time. And I actually ruined a rear main seal doing this, uh, practicing an install as well. So hopefully my mistakes help you guys watching this video. All right, folks, we got the RTV on here. It's in all the slots, got the new gaskets on. Got the guide on for the rear main seal. Now you just want to carefully put this in without touching the gasket. This is the way you want to practice first because you'll know exactly where you can like where you can touch and where you can't touch, you know? This is my third time actually lining this thing up. It's extremely difficult. There's two dowels, a rear main seal, and at the top edges you have a multi-layer head gasket hanging down. If you end up pinching that wrong, um, it'll fold it back into there and be a, be a nightmare. So this was not a fun part, but got to get done. All right, I think I got the rear main seal in there, but I'm going to leave this little... Uh, cap on there 
just to make sure. So there's still a small gap between the timing cover and the block, the RTV is not really touching yet. So I just come through with a screwdriver and uh, just hand tighten each of them just because I don't want to do one side too much more than the other. So I just keep coming back and evenly doing it all the way around because I just want even pressure as much as possible. And watch the rear main seal as you're doing this to make sure that you have it on there correctly. All right, so I got the timing cover on now and we're going to wait, uh, it hasn't been torqued down properly yet, but we're going to wait an hour as recommended on a bottle of the RTV sealant. New for me too, I know, it's crazy, I read. Do you read? Um, and we're gonna come back and torque all these down accordingly. The rear main seal, you can see, it was, it was put on by a professional, clearly. Uh, that looks great. Everything else looking very nice. Now, uh, we're actually gonna torque down our cam adjusters here. We're gonna remove our pin. Uh, we're going to take out the locking pin on the inside of the engine and we're going to start rotating the engine a bunch to see if we completely ruined it or not. It's 40 newton meters on each one and then we're going to go 80 newton meters and then we're going to do a 90 degree turn. So we're basically going to go 2950 foot pounds of torque uh, on both of them and then we're going to go right about, what is that, right under 60, right under 60 foot pounds of torque again and then we're going to 90 degree turn them. Right, so you have a lockout tool on there, you'll be applying pressure plus your torque wrench. So we're just going to go to 29 foot pounds right here. I want a 90 degree turn after that. <laughs> I mean, we'll give it a go, but... <laughs> so, my bro is helping me here. He's a little thicker than I am. And uh, this is already a lot of weight right here. Uh, 60 foot-pounds of torque is a decent amount, as you can see. Before it clicks and goes. So, uh, yeah, getting another 90-degree turn out of this is scary because... It's scary because you have, like, this little... This little thing holding it, right? But if these things snap off or if it moves, bad news bear, your lockout tool slips. It's gonna be it's gonna be a bad day. So I mean there's lots of things that could go wrong, so yeah, I mean they want another 90 degrees on that. So I mean we'll see what we can we can give it, but that's that's heavy. About as much as you're gonna get, right? Yeah, yeah, comfortably. Comfortably, yeah. Comfortably, I don't want. I could keep going, but yeesh. Guys, I'm built like a vegetarian, so that's 240 pounds of meat putting it down for me. So it's helpful. Uh, now that I have everything back together here and this torque down, I'm actually going to yoink that out. Hopefully we all good here. Now we're going to remove this uh, engine pin right here, this locking pin. There it is. Make fun of those skinny wrists now. And that's totally doable in the car too. Uh, it's not fun, but it's doable. I got this in the car with the engine still in, so... Uh, before I put the other pin back in, which looks like this. So now we're gonna rotate the engine five times and make sure everything is good. All right, so we've rotated the engine, a total of five complete revolutions. Uh, these holes still line up. Our timing marks are still lining up on both sides. We did notice an odd uh, clicking, but both of the, the intake side cams do this weird click when they're going through. Maybe it shows it on camera, but uh, we determined that to be normal. Maybe it has a lack of oil pressure because there's no oil in here, obviously. Um, so we went uh, around another five times off camera just to make sure that we were good. Um, we're still lining up every time we come around, so uh, fingers crossed that's good. Next, we're going to come back and retorque the timing case bolts because the sealant is now about an hour or so in, 
and then we're going to be putting on the timing covers and then we're going to be putting on the valve covers and once the valve covers are on the, it'll get new spark plugs and this engine is ready to be placed in the car. Uh, so we're just torquing these uh, flywheel bolts down. It's 60 newton meters, which is about 44.2 foot pounds of torque or so. And then it wants a 90 degree turn and another 90 degree turn after that. Uh, I paint mark each one, so one dot for one rotation, two dots for two if that's what you're doing. It just helps you keep track. All right, so with that installed now and ready to go, uh, that would be a bitch in the car. So, I mean, easier that we're out here on our custom uh, engine jack here that we made. We have the timing covers prepped. Uh, now we're gonna install them onto the car with new bolts as always, so. And this is five Newton meters of torque. All right, so these are really hand tight and I'll come back and torque them down. Uh, in a little bit once they're ready to be torqued. All right, so we'll, we'll come back to the timing covers and we'll torque those down after the RTV sets. Again, read the instructions, but uh, I came in here. I put assembly lube on all of the lobes here and underneath the girdle just to help prevent dry fires. Uh, next step, this is why I originally started the job was to pull the spark plugs. So I pulled my engine to pull my spark plugs out. So here we are. Um, so next I'm gonna pull out the spark plugs, clean out residual oil, and we're gonna put the valve covers on each side. So now all the holes are cleaned out. My parts box is, dimin is diminishing in size, which I'm happy for. Uh, we got new coolant lines, new belt. I threw on some new tensioners, gonna clean the front of the engine. This part just snapped off because this piece of shit Harbor Freight jack doesn't stay up. So it lowered overnight and then snapped this off. So I'm gonna go give another hundred and something dollars to local parts store for that. Why not? And yeah, we're gonna throw some new plugs in there. We're using the the Bosch plugs, I think I got these ones from FCP Euro. That way they're they're guaranteed for life, man. So if you mess these up, I mean, not, not if you mess these up, but like when you're when these are old and expired, you can uh, return them back to FCP and they'll actually ship you new ones, believe it or not. Um, this is interesting too, so I'm switching from a three prong to a one prong. So if I get any issues with that, just know FCP Euro. Brand new valve cover and brand new Valve cover bolts.
So excuse my uh, massive torque wrench. This is the only size that I have. But you want to take these to 60 newton meters or uh, or 23 foot pounds of torque, about roughly. The RTV is set for a while, so we're going to come through and torque these five newton meters, which is about uh, which is about forty four point two five inch pounds of torque. All right, so we got a new gasket on here. Going to install the oil filter housing now. Let's grab the engine ready to go. New tensioners on the front cleaned up. I have a new pipe on the way because the little tip broke off, so that'll be here tomorrow. Engine pin is back in. Everything is cleaned up and ready to go. I'm gonna raise the transmission up a little bit more and then we're gonna start getting this in here, right here. Putting the engine back in was actually surprisingly easy. We had to lift the carb off the ground a little bit so the engine jack would get under there, but other than that, it was uh, relatively easy. Fell right in. Lo and behold, the engine is back in. Motor mounts are hooked up. Bell housing bolts are connected. Let's come on down here into Schittsville. So, if you ever dive into this project, uh, these bolts are a bitch. Let me show you why. The torque converter is behind this flywheel. You gotta stick your little vegetarian fingers back behind it and rotate it until this bolt hole lines up. It rotates freely, but, I mean, anybody who has bigger hands than me can't. My, my brother tried, he can't even get his fingers in there. It's a pain in the ass. You gotta put Loctite on this bolt. Then you have to use this ridiculous setup because of the angle that that is in. But once you remove the starter, that's how you remove the torque converter bolts right here, and that's how you put them back in. So we put them back in finger tight. We're gonna rotate this over, and uh, we're gonna put all three of them in. Right, almost there. Don't worry if you can't see shit, um, I can't see shit either. Boom. And then, uh, so yeah, you just repeat this process. It's really boring, nobody wants to watch that. Just repeat the process and uh, then you'll torque them down afterwards. So, uh, catch up to you on the next one. I now have the motor installed. Uh, I'm going to start hooking up all the accessories. I don't have the intake installed because the coolant flange pipe actually broke uh, the jack lower down onto it and smacked the top of it. So another $180 down the drain. I'm waiting on this pipe to come in. It's just a lot easier without the intake on. Meanwhile, I'm going to be setting up a power steering pump and AC condenser. Going to be hooking those up right there. And then I'm going to be hooking up the alternator down here, getting the starter hooked up. Um, well, that's kind of boring, so let's jump into it being finished. So progress has been made here. I got the uh, ignition coils in. We have the whole wiring harness set up, a fuel line set up, accessory belt, new tensioners, uh, new pipe across the front. I replaced that hose right there as well. Next and I have the crankcase vent tube successfully set up. It ran really tight through here. This isn't a factory part, this is aftermarket, so I imagine that's part of the problem. Either way, um, that's all buttoned up. So everything right now is hooked up on the engine, um, all the plugs, everything else. The next step I'm doing is connecting some coolant lines that I have here, and I'm gonna be uh, getting it ready pretty much to fire up next. All right, so I wanted to demonstrate something too really quick. Uh, this car didn't have any service done for a while on it before I got it. 
This is fresh. This is fresh coolant, and that's the coolant I took out of it. I promise it's not V8 splash, but a little different here. So I'm gonna grab my little uh, funnel that I have. I don't have a thing that screws in here, but that's fine. Sit like that. Just throwing some coolant in now, and then um, I'm using this cheaper oil that I got from O'Reilly's just to flush it out. No, you don't need extra oil to flush it out, but that's just how I do it. This engine was very neglected before I got it, so I'm throwing this in to start it, and I'll throw some liquid moly engine flush in before putting some really good stuff in it at the end here. Alright guys, the moment we've all been waiting for and the moment I've been working so hard for is to finally start this thing. I am nervous as all can be, I'll be 100% honest. Um, I'm not an Audi mechanic, I've never pulled an Audi engine before. This is the first engine I've pulled out and redone like this. Um, I followed all the torque specs and everything I could down to a T, so let's jump in and see how it starts. Alright guys, uh, fingers extremely crossed right now. Well, that's not a good sound, so I'm going to figure out what the f I can do here. Alright, so just as I suspected, the tensioners do not have oil pressure inside of them. If you know how to pressurize those before you start the engine, let me know. Maybe crank the engine a few times or something like that. Again, I'm, I'm new in these streets. Uh, the car is running now, and it's running ideally. It sounds a lot better than it did, so let's check it out. I believe the thing that happened was I removed so much of the oil out of this engine as well that it did not have any oil up top whatsoever. This engine has been out for weeks. So I really hope that nothing happened. I put a lot of assembly lube on the top of those cam lobes for this reason exactly right here. So we're gonna let it run, we're gonna let it get hot, we're gonna see what happens, scan it for codes, and I'll keep you guys updated here soon. All right, so we finally have heat blowing out, which is, the system is burped. Uh, it's not intaking any more coolant. It's been running for about about an hour now. So next I'm actually gonna add the Liquid Molly engine flush. It's gonna run for another 15 minutes. And then I'll be adding the Liquid Molly 540 with a new man filter. All right, 15 minutes is up. It says 10 minutes, I did for 15. Next, we're gonna drain out the oil. That is uh, only 45 minutes to an hour of running synthetic oil with Liquid Molly engine flush. All right, so I'm gonna let this drain for a little bit longer. One of the little tricks I like to do is just lift up the driver's side with a jack. That way it kinda just tilts the car to where the oil hole is. It just gets a little bit more out, maybe like an extra quarter or so, but that's the point, I'm trying to clean all the fluids out, so. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna button this back up and then we're gonna throw this oil in there and take it for a test drive. Also, one thing I wanted to note, this is a, a Man Hummel uh, oil filter. It has a plastic guide all the way down the middle of it so that the filter doesn't deform and collapse on itself. If we look at the micro guard, which I never recommend using for longer than just an oil flush, there's nothing in there. This thing will just collapse and suck on itself and all that fun stuff. It's the reason why I don't use cheap oil filters. I use man. The k one has one in the middle like this too, even though some of you guys hate on them. That's your choice, but that's what I use. So during that process, my oil cap was right here. It fell down and magically went into the bucket. So I'm gonna pour that out. I'm not reaching in there, so I'm gonna pour it out first, but ah. I have this hydraulic oil lifter additive that I am gonna go ahead and add. The parts are new on here, but uh, this ensures hydro rams work to the optimum, uh, minimizes noise, cleans the oil circuit. Uh, it's good for up to six liters. Uh, first aid is don't drink it and don't put it on your skin. 
Who would have thought? Who is thick? She's thick, boy. Now that the food's changed and we're running nice, we kind of push the core support back in and fasten it up. You don't need a special tool, a locking kit like people recommend. You can use these bolts that hold the front bumper on right here as your support. So what I'll do is I'll lock in three other bolts right now and then I'll remove this one and this will be smushed up against there. All right guys, so it turns out when I put the bumper back on, the memory card ran out of storage and I just wasn't paying attention, I was in a hurry. I didn't get any of that footage, but jumping forward now. We got her all put back together. It's been washed, driven, tested. No leaks are happening or anything like that right now. So I just wanted to give a quick update because tomorrow we're going on around a 400 or so mile road trip. In total, we're, we will be doing about 800 miles right after I just did all this work. So I'm confident in my work that we'll get there and back. Hopefully it does good. Peace. Check the mic and make sure it sound right, boys.